In the 13th century, Eurasia's zones of civilization became linked by a single state, the Mongol Empire. The Mongols originated in Central Asia. They were a pastoral nomadic people moving across the steppes of Central Asia with their herds of horses. As nomads, they had certain tactical advantages. In particular, they could carry out head and run attacks against targets of opportunity before fading back into the steppes to avoid retribution. In this, pastoral nomads like the Mongols held a tactical advantage over settled populations that they enjoyed until the development of rapid-fire rifles in the 19th century. The empire had its own origin when Chinggis Khan united several Mongol tribes in 1206 CE. Chinggis Khan became the Great Khan. Khan being a title similar to king or chief. Under Genghis and his son, the Mongols swept across the north and central Asia as well as into Persia in 1219 to 1221 CE and then on to the Middle East and Anatolia. They occupied China in a series of campaigns through the 13th century ending in 1279. Europe was also not untouched. The Mongols controlled what is now European Russia between 1237 and 1480. They also launched attacks on Poland, Hungary and Bohemia in the modern-day Seish Republic in 1241. Only the death of the great Khan Genghis Khan, Genghis son in December 1241 and a preference for richer pickings in China saved Europe from a full invasion. The Mongols' religion had no sacred texts or particular ceremonies, but was rather a mix of animism, ancestor worship, and shamanism. Instances of the elements of fire, earth, and water impressive geographical sites like mountains and natural phenomena such as tombs were considered to possess spirits. Shamans, who could be both men and women, were thought able to, in a state of trance, communicate with these spirits and travel in their world, helping to find lost souls and divine future events. Above all, though there was a widespread belief in the principal two deities, the Earth or Mother Goddess known as Ichugin, who represented fertility and Gok Tengri, the blue sky or eternal heaven. This latter deity was seen as a protector god and crucially, he was thought by the tribal elites to have given the Mongol people a divine right to rule the entire world. The Mongol Empire was the largest contiguous land empire that ever existed. The Mongols' success at subduing and controlling people of so many different religions, languages and regions meant that running the empire was always extraordinarily challenging. In China, the Mongols could maintain their rule better than elsewhere because the strong Chinese tradition of centralized state power supplied a stable framework of governmental organization. But ultimately, the empire began to fragment as the central government in China weakened. The fall of the Mongol Empire really began after the death of the Mongol unifier and universal ruler, Genghis Khan, in 1227. After a little over a century after his death, the Mongol Empire was a fraction of what it was at its territorial height. Shortly after Genghis Khan's death, major infighting between his descendants led to the Mongol Empire's being split into four different Khanids, each ruled by a different Khan. The Mongol Empire went from being a somewhat anarchic land unified by the fear invoked by Genghis Khan himself to a divided land, each for smaller than the original territory. After the death of Kublai Khan, the Mongol Empire stopped expanding and began its decline. The Yuan dynasty became weaker and the Mongols began losing control over Khanids in Russia, Central Asia and the Middle East. After Kublai Khan died in 1294, the empire became corrupted. The Mongol Empire had fractured into four separate empires or Khanates. 
This weakness allowed the Han Chinese Ming Dynasty to take control in 1368, while Russian princes also slowly developed independence over the 14th and 15th centuries and the Mongol Empire finally dissolved.